Welcome back everybody to another game of the Join the League season number 5. It is the division 2 of the Asian com or part of it. It is Execration versus well Neckbreak Esports who did go under the name of Team is Mystery. We'll see if they're gonna run under the same name or this time around. Looks like they haven't even put the tag at all. But what can I say man Execration? They lost within 28 minutes. Of course we had a reasonably long time of pauses in between but just kind of a crushing defeat for Execration I do have to say they just fell apart although they had a solid draft on paper but maybe it was too like half a year ago kind of draft it was definitely TI4 material that's what I can say in the draft but here we are the second game Execration this is where they have to redeem themselves whether they're going to be able to, we shall see soon enough, but even if they lo even if they win this one, there isn't going to be a third game, guys, because this is only a two-game series, being in the group stage and everything. You can more or less just uh, treat them as two separate best of ones, just played in a row. That That's more or less how it works. It's just scheduling-wise, it's a lot easier for you to do two games in a row than just play two different best of ones. But looking at the bands now, Execration once again removing the Brewmaster, whereas Juggernaut taken out by Neckbreak. So are we gonna see a possible Axe ban this time around? I mean, it just feels like Axe wins, I, I wouldn't say most of the games maybe, but... Okay, I, I really feel like Axe is winning at least more than 50% of the games is just getting through and getting picked. But Execration, funny enough, banning out the Tidehunter now. They themselves used it. And I guess Tidehunter, it's not like it was Tidehunter's fault. There were some pretty nice ravages there. But I, I'm not entirely sure if... Uh, it would have even been a just choice of neck break to go for the Tidehunter, but... I guess it's, it's not a bad ban in general. But Execration now, do we see the Vengeful Spirit for them? Yes, we do. But Axe, I'm pretty sure Axe is going to come out. Doesn't what? Matter. Dazzleax? Oh, please, Dazzleax! Or are they gonna go for a minus strategy? Minus armor, just threat. Axe. Maybe. They can still go for minus armor if they want to. Minus armor would boost up the counter helix as well, so it's not like Axe doesn't get any synergy with it. But Dazzle keeping the Axe alive. Oh god, it's gonna be painful. And no! Execration, please, no! Please! Okay, guys, kill me now. I don't want to solo cast this game. Oh, please, please, no, Naga. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is what nightmares are made of, guys. Had a Naga game yesterday. Went 50 plus minutes, as you can expect. Naga's team was losing pretty bad. In the end, they won. <laughs> end of story. But Axe and Dazzle, they definitely are, at least, uh, by their na nature, aggressive enough heroes, especially as a combination. To possibly end the game before this Naga Siren gets huge and gets to those uncontrollable stages of the game. Looking at the next set of bands though. Ember Spirit removed by Execration. As well as the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain definitely would have been some nice additional aggression. Also pretty good AoE with that Sonic Wave of course. Especially should he go for an Aghanim Scepter. Would be able to blow up those Naga Illusions with ease. Also just in lane. Would be pretty damn abusive up against Naga Siren I would assume. As Wind Ranger is the pick now. Last game did get banned. This game we'll see what Neckbreak are capable of wielding that hero. As Viper with the Doombringer banned by Neckbreak themselves in the second phase here. So with the Doom being banned. Do they have maybe like a Storm Spirit in mind or something along those lines? To be honest it might be just... Wind Ranger is a hero that definitely does not, not want to get doomed. Even a Dazzle for that matter and... Dooming a Dazzle actually isn't even a waste, even if the Dazzle is a support. Just because Dazzle, he can keep people alive for so long. And if you Doom somebody else, the Dazzle might make it so that the Doom target just runs away. Uh, with enough, just enough health to survive that damage over time from the Doom. Of course, if you have an Aghanim Scepter level 3 Doom, level 3 ultimate. You do 1280 pure damage. 1280 pure damage over the duration of, I was I think it was 16 seconds, sounds about right, 
because with 17 the calculation suddenly wouldn't work. But it's a massive amount, but not gonna happen in this game at least. But Execration, they need some great heroes to just create the space. Centaur offlane, for example, wouldn't be too horrible for them. I guess if they want to, there's a tiny chance to go for like a faceless void. To be honest, Song with the Siren into like a Chronosphere isn't too bad for the setup at all. So it might happen. Witch As Witch Doctor will be the pick. I mean, there is quite a decent amount of minus armor coming out, so... The Death Ward could get some additional value. As I mean, Vengeance Aura, Riptide from Naga Siren. And that's about it, for now at least. Maybe they're gonna go for some more, who the hell knows. Although I don't really think they want to go for a Slaughter, because if that doesn't work out, I mean, fighting S4, having the Naga Siren farm, might be a complete fail boat for them. But what can they go for? I still think Centaur offlane might not be too bad of an option. Or really anything, even a Puck, to be honest, wouldn't be too bad. Maybe run a Puck mid lane and leave the Naga Siren to farm up safe lane, for example. Something along those lines. But with the Storm Spirit pick now coming the way of Neckbreak, that just means that they have a really, really freaking aggressive lineup now. Axe, Dazzle, Storm Spirit as well. They definitely want to make sure that this Naga Siren will not be an issue this game at all. Won't get to the stages where he just has the Radiance and gets all the farm that he would ever need. As Razor, he is the pick for Execration though as the fourth one. I guess he is a hero that can kind of survive. Builds a mech, builds like an Aghanim Scepter, so... As far as like core heroes go, maybe a little bit tankier than some of them, but... How are they gonna lane this? How are Neckbreak going to lane this? Do they go for aggressive tri lane with Axe, Dazzle, plus one, and... If... How is this Wind Ranger gonna be played? Is it Wind Ranger solo safe lane up against whatever Execration will have in their own off lane? We'll find out in the last picks, I guess, but at the moment, Execration, they can easily run a Razor aggressive tri lane themselves, in all fairness. Vengeful, Witch Doctor, and Razor. Definitely wouldn't be too bad. As Magnus, wow, okay then, Magnus the ban coming out from uh, Neckbreak. Wouldn't have had, like, the most massive of Empower values in this game, but... Even then, Magnus can definitely be strong, I mean, solid lockdown, which goes through BKB. As Earthshaker is taken out, but well, if you don't get an Earthshaker, you go for a Sand King. So with this, I'm pretty certain that it's not going to be an aggressive tri lane, but they might be playing like dual lanes. Axed as a love lane, leaving uh, Storm Spirit, I guess, into the mid lane. Huh. And Wind Ranger then playing the safe lane. It's possible with the Sand King mostly helping out Wind Ranger a tiny bit, but mostly just taking care of the jungle. I mean, the good thing is that the axe, if the offlane fails, he can go into the jungle, but then again, that would be just taking away farm from the Sand King. So, we'll see how it's gonna work out for them. It's just having like two junglers might be a slight overkill, but there are plenty of camps to stack. So, if you stack all of them, you should be able to at least get some farm on both. Maybe just prioritize Axe's Blink and then Sand King shortly to follow. As Execration, last pick, what hero could create excellent space? I still think Puck, even Puck offlane might not be too horrible in this game. Although there is a solid amount of lockdown, yes. But they do go for an exec, uh, pff, a Clockwork instead for them. Clockwork is decentish against Axe. Wind Ranger, this game, I would expect a force staff to be built on him or her. Storm Spirit can just ball lighting away from that, of course. And Execration. They don't have all that much lockdown to be honest against the Storm Spirit, for example. I mean, they have the magic missile. If he's out of mana, yes, you can ensnare him up as well, but that's about it. I mean, maybe if you land the hookshot. But guys, to introduce the lineups for the second game of this particular series, and well, the second and the last game at the same time, no matter the outcome of this one, there will be no third game. But for Execration, Yaj playing the Clockwork, heading towards the offlane, leaving Chemo to support him on the Witch Doctor. With Fox on the Vengeful Spirit, Jed playing that Naga Siren, rushing a bottle, although it did start with a Quelling Blade. Primo though, he's on the Razor, heading towards the safe lane, and Razor against Axe is a pretty good matchup for the Razor, to be honest. Although Axe can possibly even handle that lane, at least get some form of farm, 
at least with the Dazzle helping out, but A3-5 playing the axe, leaving Burn on the Dazzle to stand in for them, Red Noach playing the Storm with Totka 2 on the Sand King, and Prophecy will be the last one playing that Wind Ranger. I mean, Dotka 2, it so sounds like a, a, you have to say it like a Russian. Dotka 2. Hey, no, that's wrong. Oh, I suck at imi imitating stuff. I think the first time came a little bit better. Dotka 2. Dotka 2. Don't know. Whatever, guys. Whatever. Don't mind me. I'm just going silly here. Oh, no. Are we going to get some kills? Maybe so. Not going to get close enough. No boots on tanking, still able to outrun. And no boots, Vengeful Spirit. But they want to come into the mid lane early on. They do get the bounty rune, Razor gets the other one, so... That's actually pretty huge. If your team manages to get both bounty runes, that's a pretty huge advantage. And Kimo, oh god, they're gonna start blocking off the camps for the Sand King. Of course, can't say it's not all that surprising, but... Red Noir has to be a hill of just extremely careful here. Jet did go for the Riptide first, maybe should have waited for the proper situation because that Snare would have been perfect setup for the support to get close enough to the Storm Spirit. So I think just it could have been an easy first blood, it still might be an easy first blood, but Jet might just have to wait for the level 2 beforehand. So it, it's just a little bit of a waste of time, although without the Riptide maybe they would have lacked the damage a little bit to kill off the Storm Spirit, so it's a so-so decision. But he's gonna hit level 2 now with one more creep. He's gonna maybe pick up Ensnare. Maybe gonna go for Mirror Images. Because usually you don't go for Ensnare at all almost in the mid lane. Just Mirror Images and Riptide galore. But Red Noach will be safe for now as Kimo. He's had enough. Places down a ward and will head towards the top lane instead. To help out Clockwork. Actually Clockwork try lane might get easy kills on the Prophecy. You get the stun onto the uh, Wind Ranger. And just to get the stun, which means Clockwork can get close enough for the Cogs. Cogs battery assault. Without the force, there's no way for the Wind Ranger to escape that in most cases. So it could be a kill lane as mid lane. Fox came in yet unable to go for a kill. No ensnare there anyway, so they, they did some damage, but Storm Spirit will have a bottle soon enough as top lane. No, nope, nothing much gonna happen. Just some harassment, trading hands. As well, we have a disconnect. No! No, Dotka too! Dotka, please, please. Come back. Don't leave us, bro. You're... Don't leave us. At the moment, though. Oh, he's already reconnected, man. That That's awesome, as Axe. He has dropped pretty damn low. 56 points of damage was stolen also by Primo. Man, just... Uh, any kind of melee here up against Razor isn't favorable, even with the Dazzle helping out, it's a little bit hard, but last it's he's slightly ahead, this burn does find Fox, who's gonna win the battle, magic missile to pick up the rune, oh it's a haste as well burn, he's gonna go down for first blood, going to Roche dude, going to Roche, he has the shallow grave, but will it even be enough, he's not running towards the axes either for some reason, shallow grave will be there, but nobody's coming in to assist him, no storm spirit, I have no idea why just people aren't coming in to help. Or Fox might still be in trouble if Red Noah gets like a, never mind, no electric vortex. So Fox will not get the first blood. Nice shallow grave in the end, saving the dazzle. Has a healing salve as well. Man, that's, that's a little bit sad, first of all. I mean, I totally thought Venture Spirit will run towards some kind of assistance. But there's the burst on to Kimo. Power shot to follow as well. No shackle shot is there, but it's going to be first But Oh no, the Cogs! They only need one more right click, but unable to get it. Sandstorm, of course, Dotka will be just fine. But the result will not reach in his targets. But bottom lane, Axe might be in trouble. Gets the Berserker Skull off and runs away before the Magic Missile. Nicely done, and suddenly Fox, he's the one in trouble. Shadow Wave, not, not there. He has the Shadow Grey, but Battle Hunger will be enough to get the first blood anyway. It is split between the heroes, but Primo now. He's gonna get Poison touched up. Still no Shadow, shallow Grave, or Shadow Wave rather. There's the Berserker Skull, immediate counter Helix as well. A little bit lucky on the RNG there. But in the end, they get two kills. And Wind Ranger, they get Kimo in the end anyway, top lane. So make it 3 to 0 for Team Neckbreak. As mid lane, Jet. Does have his bottle? Yes, it does. Also, Ring of Aquila almost complete, just needs another 100 gold or so. Storm Spirit at the same time is 5 last hits behind. I guess he was under some harassment earlier on, but. At least has his own bottle coming out, so it's gonna be fine for him. Has enough gold for boots or 
Rather has boots finished now. Yeah, he sent the courier back for a second to pick them up. So he's still gonna be fine. As long as he gets the level 6, he can start just setting up kills on the other lanes. Unless he really wants to stay on the mid lane and at least make it so that Naga Siren doesn't completely snowball. But Naga himself looks like at least it seemed like he wants to go and stack up some camps. But yet, oh god, gets a region rune. Didn't get the bottle it up though. Would have been excellent for the Storm Spirit. Region rune, Storm Spirit's best friends. Like diamonds are girls, Storm Spirit just loves region runes. But unable to bottle it up. Unfortunate for him, so he's gonna have to bottle crow once again or wait for a minute and a half. Nice top lane, clockwork. Is level 4, Witch Doctor level 2, but Witch Doctor will have boots now. Gonna make it a little bit easier for him to survive as mid lane. Some harass is there towards Naga Siren, but has a full bottle and will be completely fine thanks to that. In the meantime, Burn sitting on the sidelines. Maybe even wants to go for a kill on Primo, but Primo is fast enough, I think, to outrun them, but then again. Poison touch plus battle hunger might just be enough. Burner strike in the meantime. Power shot to follow. Few more right clicks. Cox push prophecy back, but he has to win round to try to catch up. Is he gonna use the shackle shot? Probably not even gonna need it. Paralysis cast will bounce. Will bounce back. Yes. Little bit of orange. Jesus. Power shot though. Man, the range is way too long. Even without the buff to power shot, I think that might have just been enough to clip him anyway. But four to zero. Team is a mystery or neck break or how or whichever they name they want to go by. Off to a pretty great start, this fox might be in a hell of a lot of trouble. Are we gonna see a battle hunger? He's waiting for it, he's not gonna go for it. For some weird reason, unknown to me, unknown to man. <laughs> Maybe we just wanted those tranquil boots first. So he, he just played it safe, but he's gonna farm up the mud golems instead. Have burn on the dazzle, just leech some XP. Maybe get some last hits if he can get close enough without endangering his own life. As face boots, soon to be finished on Prophecy. More mobility, more damage with just harass. So the lanes so far for Execration, horrible. At least Naga Siren is farming up the best. 40 last hits and actually that's that's a massive amount of, ahead of anything else. But some of them must be jungle creeps by now. So it, it's a little bit inflated. But still about 600 ahead in net worth of anybody else. So as long as the Naga Siren gets a fast Radiance, it's gonna be fine, but Shackle Shot will latch! Oh god, what a long one! Are you kidding me? That's... that's not cool, bro. Wind Ranger, you cheat. Even has a haste room, but... Still not gonna be able to go for the kill clockwork, just tanky enough with the help of the Voodoo Restoration there by Witch Doctor. As uh, Axe, he has been left solo now. Storm Spirit, together with Burn, just... Stealing some farm away from that uh, Naga Siren now. Also, one sentry ward was placed for the big camp not to get stacked at all. They do ping it out in a sense that, guys, this one has been farmed up. So Naga Siren might be a worthy kill because Naga Siren having more network or having more gold freely around means you can lose more gold. But, oh, Axe, he's gonna be in trouble. Gets the Berserker Skull. Is he gonna survive this? Magic sticks up, but not gonna be enough. Not enough Raging Creeps to just induce those uh, counter helix procs. So they finally get the kill on the board, a pretty nice one also, getting some decent levels, of course. Primo was level 6 from beforehand, now hits level 7. That one early pointed to Eye of the Storm, definitely proving to be helpful in this case. Also Clockwork about to hit level 6, so with the hookshot they can possibly start going a little bit more aggressive and try to make up, make up for what they lost earlier, but look at the graphs, they're rather even as it is. So the kills haven't in the end amounted to too much for the favor of uh, Neckbreak. Nice, uh, Razor does have himself a Ring of Region, might be the headdress in the making. Brings out the Healing Salve as well, will share it to Foxman, what a nice guy. Not too sure who even purchased the Healing Salve, but... Nice move nonetheless, nicely done. As A35, he's back there on the axe. Do we have... what's... what's the Sand King situation? He's level 5, up to 900 gold, not too many stacks of course. The, uh, at least this big camp was centered up to begin with. But I would have expected Sanki maybe to have a little bit more mini. It's not like he's done too much for now. But there is a smoke from Prophecy as well as Totka. If they catch anybody, it might be easy kills. The Shackle Shot will latch onto Che. Power Shot to follow. Burrow Strike will not be there. He gets the Power Cox. The Burrow Strike will land then you in the end anyway. With the Shadow Wave, Dazzle picks up the kill for himself. So almost the Power Cox were enough to save him, but almost doesn't matter. Just 
anything in the end. So make it 5 to 1. Axe now has to resort to just stacking and farming up ancients. If you can even farm them up. Maybe if you drop like Tranquil Boots. As Storm Spirit mid lane takes some heavy harassment from just Jet, the Illusions, as well as the Riptide from them. So Naga Siren still farming up, I'd have to say extremely well. 2000 gold on him already. So unless stopped soon, that early Radiance might just... Maybe not signal the end immediately for the Dire Side, but... It, it's just... Man, it's going to be so difficult to go up against the Radiance Naga, to be honest. First of all, it disables Blink Daggers, which means that Axe and the Sand King might... Well, I, I wouldn't say completely useless, but a lot less effective than otherwise. So they need to do something about this Naga Siren, but Axe, not getting off to that great of a start this game, not having a Blink Dagger, they cannot just jump in on Naga Siren quite as easily. And now Naga, being level 9, does have the Song of the Siren as well. I, I really expected them to put a little bit more just effort in dealing with the Naga Siren. I mean, it's all well and good that you can kill off other heroes, but as long as the Naga gets his Radiance, it's fine. Berserk Skull, not coming out yet. He got Magic Missile and not going to go any deeper because of that. But man, Naga Siren, 2.6k gold already. Well, I, I guess Chad, the last game was just a warm up for him or something. He was just waiting to get his Naga because... The farm he's getting this early on is absolutely ridiculous and that's without any towers falling. Just just imagine its creation also having some push with like a Jakiro or something like that. Bottom lane though, we might have a bait coming out, Fox. He's at the sidelines, at the side shop. Man, life is tough. What the hell? What the hell are they gonna do? Just kill the Naga guys! Focus the Naga 2.8k gold. You have another 1k gold window. They are going to run into a hero, which is the Clockwork at the moment. And they're going to see him. They're going to get the stun. Burrow Strike there. Electric Fortress at the same time, though. A little bit unfortunate. They should have enough for the kill anyway. And indeed, they will with the overload of Red Noach Storm Spirit. So, they get a nice kill. But they still need a little bit more. They need some gold up on the Axe. They need the Blink Dagger on him or the Sand King. Sand King, even closer than the Axe is. But there's the Paralyzing Cast Burn. Gonna get Static linked up. Is he gonna be fine? Trying to TP out. And yeah, he's gonna be fine. Axe, of course, not gonna go up against the Razor or is he? With the Shackle, maybe so. It does latch Storm Spirit. He's around. Well, it's gonna be another nice kill for them. The Dunk a little bit early. But the kill will be there nonetheless. Of course, Dunk will be on cooldown now. But not that big of a deal. So, nice rotations by both cores. And with this kill, uh, there's the Sand King having the Blink Dagger now. Axe, about still 600 gold away from his own now. But once he gets that blink, if they have double blinks to work with, they still might be able to kill Chad, but he's only 300 gold short. Man, where the hell is he getting that farm? I guess stacking his own jungle, farming it up with just illusions. I have to say, quite impressive. As Totka goes in, wants to get a rune, but little does he know the Chad already got the bounty from that. So Chad, he's gonna get his re relic, Courier already flying out, and that's a 12 and a half minute relic with a bottle ring of Aquila. I I'd say that's some pretty excellent timing from him. Of course, game is by no means over. I mean, if you even if you get the Radiant, you're still gonna take quite some time before you become unstoppable. If ever, but still, early Radiance better than nothing. And with the tower going down, it's just gonna boost the Radiance recipe gold by quite a lot as well. They might kill Naga Siren now, but he's not going to lose all that much. And they're going to jump an illusion. Oh god, okay. That that's, that didn't go too well for them. Going to kill off another illusion, but this time around they know it's an illusion at least. Rocket player in the meantime comes out. Chet, he wants to come in the hookshot onto Totka. Can they have enough lockdown? Nice burrow sack to the low ground, but with the plasma field primo. Picks up the kill anyway. Oh, Fox gets a swap on to burn. He has a level 3 shallow grave, so he's maxing that out. So it's going to be just a 1 for 0. But Chet... Instead of dying there, instead of getting ganked, they get a kill onto that Sand King. Blink though, is there an axe now? So things might be looking up because of this fact. Wind Ranger also has picked up a four staff. So Clockwork not as threatening anymore against her. Or well, you can use the four staff to get somebody or one of your teammates out as well if need be. Still though. It's it just. It's scary if this Naga Sign is farming that well. Also, Mech is finished on Primo. 
So it's not like the Razer is doing all that bad. Even the Clockwork has just about the same net worth as uh, the Axe does. Probably would want to tank up maybe a little bit more if he can help it, but with the power threads and strength, 1.1k HP isn't all that bad. Four armor, maybe not the highest, but definitely not the lowest either, so... It's gonna be fine as Retnoa. 14 minutes in, just now has his first Oblivion staff on the Storm Spirit. That's... A little bit lackluster as... Oh, now! Oh, just what a pause, are you kidding me? Chet. Oh, he doesn't see the Sand King yet! Nighttime vision for the win, guys! Of course... Sand King himself doesn't know the Naga is here, but... Okay, so the vision is on this edge. If both heroes were just one hero worth ahead of themselves... So if his tail started like where his head is at the moment, I think they would be fine. But go has been given! Can they kill off Naga Siren? Maybe with the Berserker's Call. Burst Strike, Epicenter, yes, Epicenter being channeled, Berserker's Call to follow, and it is going to be a kill most likely, or is it? Yep, with the dunk, it is, so finally the kill of the Naga Siren, at least delay the Radiance recipe, if nothing else. So it's a very necessary kill, can they get some more Primo? We'll get slowed down by Burn, not the, well, Dazzle of course can't do anything solo, maybe if he had Weave, but look at the Plasma Field, Burn, it's, wow, he just almost dies to the Plasma Field and creeps. But Storm Spirit, level 11 at least. Also needs quite a lot more gold still to the Orchid. As well, Burn having to weave. What's he gonna make of it? We can help them out and just in general in going for fights. Just uh, you can apply it defensively before you go into a fight because there is quite a lot of physical damage coming out from Execration, so we're gonna be excellent. Of course, perfect scenario, you get it defensively and offensively at the same time. Nice uh, tier 1, being pressured somewhat by Primo. We'll see if PKB will be the next choice or if he's gonna go for straight of Aghanims. Does have the Ogre Club though, so can go for either. I think PKB wouldn't be too bad of a choice for sure. No Shackle Shot, no Electric Vortex, no Epicenter of course. But Prophecy did bring down a tier 1 at the same time, even without even having a single point into Focus Fire. But yet, up to 1k gold. Do we have anything else huge coming up? Urn of Shadows will be finished on Fox as they do smoke up now. I think it was spotted by this Observer, maybe on the edge at least. Of course it depends on if the entire side were even watching, but they might smoke up themselves with the supports and the axe. So they have the double blink initiation. Axe working towards the blade mill has the most important or well most expensive component ready for it. As Clockwork, if he's the one who breaks the smoke, it might be fine for them. Where is the smoke gonna go? I thought for a second they might go for the bottom side, but Wind Ranger, he's also there. He did get scouted out. Smoke breaks on Fox at least. They see Primo. Oh, what the hookshot lands. And it's gonna be an easy kill. Or is it Force Death was already used? Maybe a little bit too early. Nope, the Corks push Prophecy out. And he's gonna be perfectly fine. And suddenly, they might be the ones getting pinched. Axe wants to come in. Power shot lands on at least. One, Totkato, he cuts down, up, gets the burrow strike, only onto one. Is it gonna even be enough? The mech is there, they're still alive. Storm Spirit drops low, he's gonna have to escape to the low ground. Kimo still about, does he have a spell? Nope, he doesn't, no ultimate, no nothing as Yaj. Is he gonna get dunked? No, Berserker call it misses. Axe already missed the dunk from beforehand, it's on cooldown, Dotka will go down to Primo. It's a 2 for 0, nobody's tied for the Radiant side, are you kidding me? Primo, one more Rikert Prophets, go! One more Battle Hunger, I think it's gonna be enough, unless, yes, he doesn't get the kill on Axe, but he's still alive with the Magic Stick. Power shot will miss him as well. So make it a 3 for 0. And even Chet made it into the fight by the end of things. Has the Radiance finished. The mech coming just in big time for Execration. And also nice swap from the Vengeful Spirit there. Clean 3 for 0. Almost even killing off the Storm Spirit there. Main Execration with that fight. I, I still have no idea how they did it. But first of all, Sanking maybe a little bit low, too slow with the Burn Strike. A little bit too hesitant there, got stunned. I'm not too sure if it was a paralyzing cast or a magic missile, either or. But didn't get the immediate pearl strike. And just clockwork, he's just pretty tanky already as it is. Man, life is gonna get harder. I mean, they have their blinks, yet they have no follow-up items to speak of yet. Storm Spirit really not all that threatening yet either. He does have most of the second Oblivion stuff done at least, so he's gonna possibly get like around a 20 minute orchid which isn't like super horrible but it's not the greatest by far either it's still gonna be nice to kill off a naga siren orchid just prevented some of the siren from coming out but 
They fail to just kill anybody else. So Naga Siren, if it's alone, might be an easy kill. But if Execration just group up again like that, just the mech gives them such an advantage. And not only the mech, it's also the Voodoo Restoration being level 3. Even being maxed out before. But shit, never mind. Song of the Siren, not not carrying a TP though. Of course, Put of Rails, usually the item you go for next is mid lane. Shallow Grave, not enough to save Dazzle there. Better result, cancel the TP. Or never mind, didn't even get to try to TP out, but they're gonna lose a tier 1 now, Dotka. Can't really come in to, for the defense of it. So, Execration. Pulling slightly ahead now. Nice minus armor there, Dotka. Is he gonna blink in? Blink disabled though. There's the static link as well. Shackle Shot will latch once again, but in the back line. Axe gets pushed a little bit, but Sword Spirit comes in, gets Fox. They're gonna kill off the Vengeful Spirit at least, or are they the Death Ward is there? And Storm Spirit completely out of mana, swapped back into just three heroes. Another three, make it four for zero, possibly Primo, Plasma Field, five seconds on cooldown. They're just bleeding heroes left and right. Of course, the Dazzle died already earlier, but they're not. If the Dazzle is dead, they cannot really make any use of his just defensive mechanics. And with this, do we have a Blade Mail flying out? Oh, yes, we do. Primo also will have the BKB finished now. Yes, purchases after recipe. Top lane, Chet gets another tier 1 tower, has the Boots of Travels finished. So if you look at the graphs now, what used to be almost a 3k lead in network for the Dire side, suddenly 4000 in the Radiant. XP from about 6k to zero out, zeroed out as well, and it's only 19 minutes in, and already things are backfiring. I guess the Clockworks and the Razor's tankiness and having the mech is what just has allowed them to fight as efficiently. And Axe really hasn't really found the nice Berserker's call into dunks to just get the momentum going in those fights. But it's still far from over, I mean. They can still go for some nice aggression. They still have the Blink Burrow Strike and the Blink uh, Berserker's call to set things up and the Shackle Shot to follow if need be. As Maelstrom will be the build for Prophecy by the looks of it. Almost as it just needs the recipe. But... BKB, Tan on Primo. Are they gonna pressure the tier 2? Quite possibly they could. The Storm Spirit farming up the enemy jungle. Uh, still doesn't have the Sage's Mask, so 20 minute Orchid was a distant dream, I guess, with the fights that happened. Maelstrom, though, picked up on Wind Ranger now, so did get the recipe at least. But look at this, the tier 2. It's gonna start. Mm -hmm. Getting harassed a little bit. Swap maybe from Fox. He wants to go for it. He gets the swap as well. He gets the stun to follow. Shallow Grave will keep the Sanking alive for now. But the negative earn is there. He got the Burrow Strike off. There's the hook shot though. Storm Spirit in so much trouble. We'll have to use pretty much most of his mana to escape. He's going to bottle up. Maybe try to come back in. But three heroes are already dead. Because Chet. Did Chet just solo kill? Yes. Chet solo killed a core Wind Ranger. That just happened. And for a second I was like, GG, no, please, please, no, please don't call GG yet. But, execution, they get another tower down, and this time around, it's a tier 2. So much global gold going their way. Naga Siren, 1200 net worth already, has the Yasha. He is four, more than 4,000 net worth ahead of the tire side's highest, which is the Wind Ranger. Even the Razor is quite far ahead of them, to be honest. It just... I still feel like they needed those blink daggers like minute two earlier for the dire side. Rocket Flare comes out, doesn't connect on the Storm Spirit, so though, so Storm Spirit will be able to limp his way to safety. As uh, Primo is going for that Aghanim Scepter next. Blade Mail is finished on Axe now, so maybe it's gonna make somewhat of a difference, but I don't think it's gonna be too huge of an impact unless he really catches like three heroes with it. But look at the spread on Execration at the moment as well. They're not taking any chances. Primo with the double damage just comes in, hits from the trees. Naga Siren though is backing off a little bit. Probably wants to pressure the tier 2 and... I'd expect that to be quite successful as the tier 2 mid lane goes down. I mean... The tire side, neck break, they have a lineup designed to fight. Yet they are un unable to do so because... They just have bad experiences and... Sometimes when you lose a couple of fights, you're so reluctant to go for more even though in theory you should. Either you just go and win fights or kind of lose game. But they're taking the passive approach at the moment. Maybe like, okay, we're going to defend high ground. But in the meantime, not only the Naga Siren, even the Razor is just farming up a storm. Then again, now they do have that Orchid. 
So there's a tiny chance that it will change things. I mean, Chet doesn't have the Manta style yet, but in about 400 gold, he's gonna have that one as well. So even the Orchid might not even do anything this game. I mean, if you Orchid Razor, he's gonna BKB. I guess you can try to work it like a clockwork, but he's pretty tanky anyway, he can just pop blade mail then. Hookshot though, into Totka, oh god, Sand King, no! He gets, gets the Burrow Strike, hasted Naga Sander, wants to keep on chasing, even uses the mirror images, but... I don't think they're gonna catch up to anybody. Uh, Axe, oh, he gets spotted, but does TP out in time. Chad, looked like he even wanted to activate his ultimate as burn. He's gonna try to TP out Electric Vortex into Primo. The TP is a success and Primo, he's gonna go down now. With the death ward, PKB won't save him or will with the mech, with the swap out. But Storm Spirit uses lots of his mana Kima now. He's gonna get dunked as well, never mind. No dunk even needed. Fox silenced up. Is there any stuns? Stuns? Yes. Turtle Strike as well as the Shackle Shot. So they get three nice kills. They don't even lose to Dazzle, who just shallow grave and TP it out. So Execration. I guess if you're going like that, there's still a chance for the dire side to win, but mid lane, Axe in some trouble, he's gonna get caught, has the blade mill activated, gets the Berserker's call, might even get the counter kill, oh, damn, that dunk. He needed like one more counter helix before the dunk and it would have even worked out. So a tad unfortunate is Jet, wants to go for another solo kill possibly, so, but Prophecy already forced that into no, the song, it cancels it. Runs in where the force step was and he's blocked in now. Wind run won't help at all. He's going to burn to the range. So is he focused fire prophecy trying to do what he can? But with the help of the rocket player, another just Oh, never mind Chet. He gets silenced now. Hookshot comes in though, trying to buy some time as Chet. He's gonna lose his life. That is a huge kill. So it's gonna be Wind Ranger for Naga for now. Clockwork might be a casualty also though. Three seconds, blink forward. Red Noir out of mana, so low, and he's gonna go down. Blade Mail too strong. Totka does get the counter kill though, and now there's the Shallow Grave onto Totka. Trying to TP out, and Paralysis Cask will cancel it immediately, so. So that is a kill for them. Still, Naga Siren down, Clockwork, not too shabby of a kill, but. They lost quite a lot in the just engagement themselves. This is not getting enough farm, and Naga Siren, even with the death, still 6,000 ahead of the Wind Ranger, so. I think it's all fine. Primo. Has three components of the Agony of Scepter finish, just needs the Blade of Alacrity next. So the graphs, like we can see, do drop down a tiny bit, still more than a 9k lead, 9K lead in net worth. XP though, only about 1500, so that's not that big of a difference. Just because Naga farms up everything, mostly with the illusions, I guess. But has the Manta still finished on the Naga now? 1k on top of that as well. Might be hard for the rest next, might be the Fusal Blade, we'll see. Whatever it is, this Naga Siren is gonna be fat nonetheless. Or I'd already say she is fat to be honest. I mean, 16,000 net worth, 26 minutes in, gold per minute, sitting on 630. Whereas nobody's even breaching the 400 mark on the dire side. Man, those, those rune sounds. Blue! Woo! Roshan though, wonder when that will happen. I mean, Vengeful Spirit is there, but didn't go for the Medallion of Courage. But they might still be able to clean up Roshan anyway. I mean, Clockwork can tank it up. Even the Razor if he wants to use the mech, for example, as... Fox gets the swap with the Storm Spirit. He wants to really go for it. The Hookshot does come out a tad too late though. The Storm Spirit will be safe for now. I mean, just... But when a support Vengeful can make a Storm Spirit back off, you know something is wrong. I mean, Storm Spirit twist isn't all that tanky, so... Depending on how many heroes the Radiant have there, one just Magic Missile stun might be the end of him already, although Magic Missile isn't that long of a duration in stuns. Now though, two points into Focus Fire. Agony Scepter nearly complete on Prophecy, just needs the point booster for it. A smoke though by Fox, Yaj, as well as Chemo. Doesn't look like they're gonna find anything, but maybe they want to pressure high ground, maybe not. I still think Roshan... Might be a pretty valid attempt for them, but Smoke keeps on going. The Rocket Flare, a way to get some vision. Not too sure if they saw Dotka. Yes, the pinks come out. Never mind, it was from the Axe himself. Dotka, though, does blink out. Wave of Terror doesn't clip him, and Burst Strike into the trees and TP out. He's gonna be perfectly fine. Rocket Flare does scout him, but just as he TPs out anyway. And that's Agony Setter for the Razor, though, so that's gonna be additional pushing. Maybe that's what they were waiting for. Now Chet puts the third point into the Song of the Siren, probably went for stats. 
Maybe a misclick, who knows, on level 16, but has the level 3 song now, only a 1 minute cooldown. So he can use it to his heart's content almost as well. Storm Spirit. Just look at the damage he takes from just the Riptide and the Radiance, of course, Rocket Flare to follow. He's gonna bottle up. More illusions to come and just long ball lighting away. So what's even your next item storm? Do you go for the Shivas for more AoE clear of the Naga illusions? At the moment, just those illusions are wrecking the storm spirit part. So you're gonna have four TP out. Oh man. Sucks to play against Naga Siren, guys. Freaking sucks. At least if this Naga Siren gets too early of a radiance. Which definitely happened this game. I mean, if you let the Naga get a pre-20 minute Radiance, it was like a 17 minute one, I think. They even got one kill before they got the Radiance recipe, but even then... Oh, Blink! Axe comes in onto Primo, he has to have the Storm activated, he gets swapped back from Fox. There's the Hookshot of Pan, Fox will come out, Storm Spirit still alive, thanks to the Dazzle, but the therefore doing quite a lot Prophets. He goes down, Axe, dropping low as well, Negative Earn is still on him and might be enough with the Radiance burn of the Naga. Yes, it will be. Storm Spirit just barely made it out, Dazzle. To the rescue as always, but they're gonna lose a tier 3. Make it two tier 3s and possibly two sets of racks. So it was a 28 minute victory for Team is Mystery or Neck Break in the last game. Looks like it might not be all that much longer for this game either. At least if it really is double racksing. If it's only one racks, can they even get the one racks? They should be able to axe though. Unwilling to buy back, although he has it. And we have a pause. Axe? Maybe it's disconnected or something. But what's the battle plan on Naga? Already backed off all the way home. So they might not even be able to claim melee racks. There are still two illusions there for a four seconds. So they're not going to get this melee racks. Huh. Maybe they got a little bit greedy. Maybe if Totka comes in with a level 2 epicenter they can still hold and we do get unpaused. So are we going to stay here for melee racks? Are we just going to be satisfied with range? Primo though. Static Link activated onto the Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit has to ball lighting away. To make sure they don't get too much damage stolen as well clockwork enemy time up in the enemy base does get pearl struck up he went in way too deep so he loses his life melee rex though never mind they are gonna survive for now they do regen as well so if you don't kill them off completely you might oh Pimo, he gets jumped do we have an orchid in five seconds we do is it even gonna be enough electric vortex is there in the meantime berserker skull catches fox with the creep wave is it enough to get the kill magic missile is used primo he goes in into the middle of everybody no mech used yet won't save Fox for now, and with the movement speed, never mind, even that is not going to be enough as Prophecy. Is he going to burn? Song of the Siren keeps him in place after the 4 staff. Storm Spirit comes into the song. Riptide will get the 1 kill. Now Orchid onto chairs, but they don't care. Just look at the damage. Primo does too much. 140 damage stolen as well. And GG is called. 30 minute win. Execration with the Naga just ping too huge, too early on. 22k network. 32 minutes in. Guys. Execration, at least they get revenge, but in the end, the score was 1 1, as it's so very often in two game or in a best of two or in two game series, guys. And there will be, I emphasize, there will be no third game for this, just because it is the group stage, only two games played, no matter the outcome. But we will have more Dota today. We will actually have a Pride and League playoff match between X Game as well as Little Busters Forever, the lower bracket semi final. It will be at 14 CT, which means about 1 hour and 15 minutes away, guys. So, don't go anywhere, I guess. I probably will close the stream, though. I don't think I'm going to keep it running for an hour plus. For just nothing, more or less. But it's going to be coming up, nonetheless, in 1 hour and 15 minutes or so. So, if you want to see X Game versus Little Busters Forever in a best of 3, do come back. If you don't want to see it, you can still follow us for other games on Hefla TV on both Facebook and Twitter. For myself personally, it's at Coucher, but having said that, guys, once again, I appreciate that you came, and hopefully another time.